All right, today we are going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem. Please make sure you have this written down in your notes. So get out a sheet of paper and start writing. The most important thing that you need to know about the Pythagorean theorem is that you can only use it with right triangles. So maybe add that to your notes as well. Right triangles only. If it's not a right triangle, okay, then we cannot use the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A couple of things that you need to know about right triangles is that we have two legs, two sides that we call legs. That would be A and that would be B. Okay, we call those legs of the triangle. Okay, so when you hear me refer to the legs, I'm talking about the two sides that make up the right angle. Okay, so I'm talking about side A and side B. Those would be the legs. Also, everybody's favorite word when we're talking about the Pythagorean theorem is the hypotenuse. And that would be side C here. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side. If the hypotenuse is not the longest side, then we can't use the Pythagorean theorem and it's not a right triangle. The hypotenuse is always the side that's across from the 90 degree angle. It's typically the one that is kind of slanted. So it's important that you know the difference between the legs and the hypotenuse. Now looking over at our equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A, b, and c all represent sides of a right triangle. A and B, we talked about, are the two legs. Okay, um, leg one, leg two, it doesn't matter which side we put in for A and which side we put in for B. Okay, we can switch them around and that will make a little more sense here in a minute, but it doesn't matter which one you label as A or B, just both legs would go there. Then C is the hypotenuse, that longest side. Right? And that side length will always go in for C into the equation. Please pause the video and take down all of these notes. Right? They are important so that you understand how we're gonna do these next few problems. All right, example number one. Okay, we're going to assume all of these we're working with have a right angle right here. All right, and they want us to solve for side C. Since this is a right triangle, we can use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I always rewrite it at the top of my paper or on each problem so that I'm not having to look back on my notes every single time. Okay, first things first, the legs of the triangle would go in for A and B. Remember, the legs of the triangle are the two sides that make up that right angle. So that would be 5 and 3. So I'm going to put 5 in for A and 3 in for B. So now I'm solving for C. Notice I didn't put anything in for C because... I'm trying to solve for it. Next step okay, is just doing basic math. 5 squared and 3 squared. Well, 5 squared is the same thing as 5 times 5, which would mean that would be 25. 3 squared would be the same thing as 3 times 3, so that would be 9. And then I still have my c squared off to the right. Next, okay, do your basic addition here. Sometimes people like to do these two steps all together into their calculator. They type in 5 squared plus 3 squared, and it will give them 34, because when I add 25 and 9, I get 34. And then notice I still have my c squared. 
Now, the problem is they are asking us for just C. They're not asking us for C squared. If you remember from the other day that the opposite of squaring something is square rooting. So to get rid of the square on the C, I'm going to square root both sides, right? because what I do to one side, I have to do the other. Now, on the right-hand side, the squared and the square root cancel each other out, so I just have C. Then, over on the left-hand side, I'm left with the square root of 34. When I type in the square root of 34, into my calculator, I get 5.83, approximately. You'll notice that it is a decimal, okay, so it's not exact, but it's pretty close. So that means our hypotenuse is about 5.83 units long. Okay, pause the video and take down notes if you need to. All right, the next one. Okay, we still have a right triangle. So take a minute and draw this picture on your paper. Okay, and since it's a right triangle, I'm still going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. First things we have to identify are the legs. Leg here and leg here. So I have two and four. So again, it doesn't matter which one I put in for A and which one I put in for B. I, I can do 2 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. I, it doesn't matter if I put 4 squared first and then 2 squared second. I'm going to get the same answer. Next, I do your um, exponents. 2 squared, I get 4. 4 squared, I get 16. And I still have my C squared to the right-hand side of the equal sign. Then add these two together, 4 plus 16. So I get 20 equals c squared. Last step, I need to get rid of the squared on the c. So I'm going to square root both sides to get rid of the square. So that cancels it out over here, and I'm left with the square root of 20. When you plug in the square root of 20 into your calculator, you get about 4.47. Right? Again, that's approximate. Right? Please check your calculator so that you can see that the decimal goes on and on. But that means our hypotenuse or our side length for C in this triangle is 4.47. I want you to pause the video and try this one on your own. Hopefully you took the time to pause the video. Check your work with mine. I got about 7.21 for my hypotenuse. Next, notice in this triangle, we have a right triangle, and we don't know a leg this time. So notice we are actually given the hypotenuse of 12, and A is our unknown, one of the legs. So when I do my Pythagorean theorem, I, I still put everything into the spots where they belong. So the legs, A and 8, would go in for A and B, and then 12 is my hypotenuse, so that's going to go in for C. Now, there's not a lot different here. There's just going to be one different step. I'm still going to do 8 squared and 12 squared to help me simplify things. So I get 64 and 144. Then I need to get A by itself, and notice we still have that plus 64. So remember how I added them in the last example? Well, now I'm going to subtract it 
over to the other side to cancel that out over here. So I'm left with just a squared on the left. 144 minus 64 will give us 80. Then, don't forget this last step, a lot of people do, is square rooting to get rid of the squared on the a. So we get a to be the square root of 80, which ends up being approximately 8.94 in your calculator. One way to check your answer kind of quickly is to make sure that your leg is smaller than your hypotenuse. Okay, so since my hypotenuse was 12, remember I said at the beginning that the hypotenuse always has to be your biggest number. Okay, well, since A is 8.94, okay, I know that I did at least something right. Okay, so the only thing that we do different when we are solving for a leg is that we subtract instead of add the two parts together, just using algebra. Okay, pause the video and take time to draw this out. Notice that I am still missing a leg in this case. They gave us the hypotenuse of 15. I have a right triangle, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I have 3 squared plus b squared equals 15 squared. So just like the last example, I'm going to follow along those same steps. 3 squared, 15 squared, 9 plus b squared equals 225. Now, if you remember, since we are solving for a leg, I'm going to have to subtract 9. So I get b squared, because those cancel, 225 minus 9, I get 216. Then, the very last step, don't forget it, to get rid of the squared here, I'd square root both sides. So I'm left with just b is the square root of 16, or you could say approximately 14.7. Okay, so again, the, when you're solving for a leg, the only thing you do differently is subtract. Okay, right, please take a moment and pause the video. You're going to do this one by yourself just like we did the third example when we're trying to find the hypotenuse. So pause the video and then I'll show you my work. Please double check that my work is correct. Double check it with yours. I got about 17.32 and I noticed that my hypotenuse is 20 so my leg has to be smaller than 20. If you still have questions, try re-watching the video if you didn't take notes, I highly recommend taking notes on all of these, but then now you can be working on the practice problems for the Pythagorean theorem.